Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be showing you how to set up the camera so it's the absolute best quality for your Samsung Galaxy S20 series. Now, I've done this on the Galaxy Ultra. This is gonna be the Samsung S20 Plus. They're all gonna be the same principles, so get out your phone and kind of follow along so you can see which is the best way to have the best photo and video quality possible with this phone. There's a lot of additions that they changed this year, so we will go through all of it. If you haven't seen our other setup videos, make sure to check out that so your phone is blazing fast like mine, and it also has ridiculous battery life. So let's get to it. Now I've reset all the camera settings uh, so that it's by default, so this will be the same as you take it out of the box. All right. So first thing I want to point out that did change over this past year is what you do when you hold the shutter button. See, taking a photo was just tapping. When you held it, it used to do a burst mode or a GIF. That is now different this year. You can do it, but it's different. So first of all, when you hold it down, it actually will do a quick video now. The problem is, is this is standard 1080p 30 frames. You can't change the video quality that it shoots with. Unfortunately, that's just something that happens now. It's of course, you know, mirroring the trend of people just wanting to jump to a quick video now. I just still wish they had the um, shutter button and the record button side by side. And then you could just make the, you know, front and uh, flip gesture for your front camera. I don't think you need this button here. This should be the record button in my opinion. However, if you did want to go back to the old school way of taking a burst shot, all you have to do is swipe down now. So if you go right on the shutter, and you swipe down. Now that will do a burst shot or a GIF. We'll show you which one you want to set up for that. In these three, you still have the wide, regular, and zoom. Your zoom goes to 3x by default on the 20. On the ultra, it goes to 5x by default. Just basically the main default with optical zoom. So uh, I would usually leave it on the three times uh, for the plus and leave it at the five times for the ultra. Don't ever go past 10 or you're just gonna get a blurry image basically. Then we go to single take. I'm not the biggest fan of this. Basically what this does is it takes a regular photo, a wide angle photo, a smart crop, a filtered photo, a short video, and that's about it, and a boomerang one. Um, in my opinion, I don't really care for this as much. Let me know what you guys think of it. Um, I just feel this would have been better if it was manual. So you can pick five types of things you want your camera to do. It would have been better off. Uh, Samsung unfortunately just made it what it is. So I don't ever use it. Um, it is coming to the S10 though, so if you have one of those as well. Then we go to the top part over here. So flash and um, timer, pretty self-explanatory. Here, three by four. So you always wanna do a three by four. If you switch to 16 by nine or one by one, it actually lowers the camera quality. So don't do that um, unless you really just need a specific photo for that specific resolution. Like when I wanna do thumbnails, I'll go to a 16 by nine, knowing that the quality will be less, but it gets me the exact ratio that I need. Then you also have the 64 megapixel camera. Now you don't ever really want this unless you're doing something of text then maybe you could do it. But if you're not, you really don't ever want to go to 64 because it will have a lot of features that are off, including a lot of features that help make your photo quality better. Um, just because the pixel bending to have this regular camera quality is much better. Uh, also, obviously this is 64, it'll be 108 on the Ultra. Then you have these filters area over here. Now you have lots of different filters that Samsung always provides for you but you can actually make your own filters. Now, what does making your own filters do? If you have a very warm shot, like a reddish shot, it will have an overall red uh, styling to it. If you have over a blue shot, it'll be overall blue. Overexposed, it'll be uh, a little bit brighter, darker, it'll be darker. So that's the kind of filter it will place based on the photo you have. It basically takes a sample of the photo you give it, and that's how it does it. Um, so pretty simple in that. And then you also have beauty mode. Make sure this is turned off. I've seen it turned on depending on the carrier you have. So just make sure it's off if you don't want it, which I don't think anyone does for their main shooter. Then we go to the video quality. Now video quality has a lot of things to go over. So we will kind of walk you through it. And we have sample videos on the channel too, to kind of talk about which the differences that we're going to go over are. 
So first of all, Seti Shot. Seti Shot is a really great way. It's like gimbal-like. It, it makes it so that your shot is going to be super steady no matter how much you're running or anything like that. So it's really great for that purpose. You have wide angle and then you also have the regular uh, kind of video as well. So you have both those options, really good on both sides. The problem is that it's six to the 1080p, 30 frames uh, format. So I'm gonna show you why that there are better formats than that. But if you do want that for a specific kind of video, then use it. 16 by nine, you also have a 8K video quality as well. Again, I don't recommend using it just because it's a huge file size. Um, YouTube doesn't really recognize it at the same time. Um, and it's just not really that well off. So. I just don't recommend it. I do like that it's 24 uh, frames per second. I wish Samsung would offer that video quality as well on their default video, but the 8K, it just, it doesn't look as good. Again, check out our sample videos to see the difference. You of course have the different filters you can have as well as the ability to do doodle. Um, I don't really care for the doodle part, but it's uh, one of Samsung's main things if you wanna go ahead and check that out. Then we're going to go into settings. Now we're gonna go over the different video qualities on here and then just go all across the board in terms of the settings you have on this phone. Okay, so uh, let's actually go back to camera just so we can go over all the different settings. Now in screen optimizer, I do leave this on. I don't find it messes it up as much. I think it had some issues on the note, but overall when I've done side by side with this version, it looks about the same. So yeah, I just leave it on. Shot suggestions, I don't really need the guidelines that it offers, but if you do want to make sure your shot is steady, then you can use that if you don't want to use grid lines. Smart angle uh, selfie, yep, and QR code, let's leave on. Here is where you can change to burst mode. I don't really care for burst shots, so I do create GIF. Um, and again, this will be if now I swipe down, it will create a GIF now. So that's how um, it does it with this new format. Saving options. I recommend just leaving it on normal. The only thing I wanna make sure to turn on is ultra wide uh, shape correction. This makes it so you don't have a bending effect on the side of your image when you use a wide angle camera. I don't recommend this format unless, you know, you really know what you're doing with this just because uh, it does make the photo smaller and really good quality. But the problem is, is that not everything can open this photo quality yet. So I don't recommend it for that reason. Raw, if you shoot in pro mode a lot, leave it on, obviously. Okay, then we go to the video quality. Now, in my opinion, the best video taking method with this phone is going to be 4K at 60 frames per second. Now, my friend Josh pointed out to me that uh, instead of the 1080p at 60 frames, which I normally recommended, 4K on this phone actually does keep stabilization now, so that is something that was added. So I do recommend it for that purpose now. So just something to note that, yeah, if you wanna shoot 4K 60 frames per second, your stabilization is just fine with it. So this is the best format you can shoot in for this phone. There is a downside to this format though, and that is when you go to the video quality, you can no longer wide angle video record and your zoom on your telephoto is not using the telephoto. It's just digitally zooming in. So for that reason, uh, again, if you need a different kind of video shot, then use that, but you'll see this is such a better video quality. It really is a shame that Samsung doesn't allow you to do both, but that's just something that they have changed. Advanced video recording, again, video format, same thing. I would not use this unless you really know everything you need except this. HDR 10 plus, again, I would not do it unless you really know what you're doing and you want to uh, kind of edit your video to make it a better color after. And uh, zoom and mic leave on, it's just basically if you zoom in, it will zoom in on the subject you're recording. It kind of cancels out noise around it. Auto HDR is always good to leave on. And this is something very new that I think it was a hidden feature and I still don't hear anyone talking about it. Selfie tone. So this will allow you to actually change the way that you look at a person. So basically on me, if I want, I can do a cooler tone or I can do a warmer tone. I typically prefer a little bit of a warmer tone. My wife uh, prefers the original, I believe, uh, but it's just kind of what, uh, what skin tone you prefer. Overall, everyone has a different skin tone and color, so it really kind of depends on which one you set. 
for you and the people you take photos with most, I would set it to that. I typically leave it on original for the most part for that reason, uh, but that's just one thing that's new this year that I think a lot of people have not talked about and it's really important. Uh, save picture as previewed. I uh, like this because I don't like the whole flip thing that most smartphones do. It kind of really annoys me when you see someone in a video and they basically have their camera flipped so you can't read text the way it's supposed to be read. It's a mirror effect, basically. Location tags, I like to turn those on. Shooting modes, I always turn on voice recording because I feel that that's a really useful tool. Um, and I turn on these two, it's on video right now, so these two are off by default. And then you can uh, choose what your volume rocker does. I still like it to be taking a photo or taking a picture, but you can also do it as zoom if you prefer that. Again, I recommend storage inside, and then some of you will have shutter sound here and some of you will not. It's up to you if you wanna have that on or not, basically. Okay, then um, with the floating shutter button, that is this, basically you just hold it and pull it out. What this allows you to do is take a very uh, easy photo so you don't have to reach all the way down to the bottom. And for angled shots, this is really kind of good when I have to just go like that, boom, just like very easily to be able to do that. So I really love this feature that Samsung offers for it. Yes, you can do the volume rocker, but the whole idea is the less you can shake it, the better. That's why the volume rocker isn't ideal for that purpose. All right, then we're gonna to go to more. I do like to rearrange some of these things. So Bigsby Vision is just kind of good if you want to translate things, do different stuff like that. Um, I edit this. So editing, it allows you to kind of put which ones you want to use. So I really never use single shot, so I take that right off. Super slow motion is 10 times better than, uh, or sorry, slow motion is better than super slow motion. So if you wanna add one, I would recommend adding that. I do not shoot in the pro versions really ever, so I kind of leave those to the more when I want to. What I do like to have is the live focus video and the night shot. Night shot I'll kind of leave all the way to the left and then the regular focus. Oops. And so this is my setup. So I'll have photo, I'll have live focus, and then I will have video and video focus. By the way, my favorite video focus, which I did do this for the video, is going to be, not glitch, color pop. This is an amazing feature that I really, really love. Basically, it turns everything black and white except for one thing, and it needs a face, so it actually won't do this with this remote, but basically everything would be black and white except for the face. It's a really cool feature if you have enough distance behind the subject. It really is one of my favorite features of uh, video taking on this phone. You also have night mode, you have live focus here too, and make sure you know you can also do the wide angle shot for, night fo uh, for live focus. I wouldn't recommend this at night, but during the daytime, it looks absolutely amazing. Uh, so yeah, just really great features that you can do with this one. You can also change the blurred effects too. So know that one. And yes, you do have the color pop for this one too. So really nice overall features. You have the night mode as well. And this night mode on a Samsung phone, you can do it every which way. That is really cool. It's something that iPhones don't have even. And a lot of people do favor the Samsung on this aspect. And then for selfies, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, you have the wide, which I always shoot with the wide. This is literally just zooming in. I don't know why Samsung does this. Take that off, Samsung. There's no point of having it. Um, just have, this is the actual camera. This is just cropping in. So yeah, just leave it on this always just because you always want a wider shot. I don't think anyone would not want a wide shot. And then you still have all the same uh, video qualities right here, which again, on the front facing camera, you can turn on. 4K at 60 frames per second, and it still will have video stabilization now. This was with the latest update that did not come out of the box like this, but with uh, the first update to the camera, it did fix that part of it. So yeah, guys, that is everything for the camera walkthrough. If you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments section down below. Lots of fun stuff with this phone, and now you are ready to shoot the absolute best photo and video quality possible with this phone. Thank you as always for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe up there. 
Make sure you follow us on social media right here. And of course, check out our latest video up there. And right down here, you're gonna find the perfect video for you. Or at least that's what YouTube tells me. Thanks again.